What's wrong, Deborah? Betty White could play better than that. I think I have cramps. You told me that you had your period last week. Well, this is probably just a UTI. You could have an infection. Why would I have an infection? I take every precaution. You are sitting naked on a bench in a public locker room. I see your point. My friend Jackie is a very good nurse practitioner. Let's go see her. Give me a moment to get dressed. Hello Agnes. What may I do for you? Hello Jackie. This is my friend Deborah. Hello Jackie. I have had pain in my lower abdomen lately. Is there any vaginal discharge? Yes. Sort of grayish and it smells fishy. Excuse me. Deborah. I want to examine you and do some tests. That sounds serious. What is wrong with me? Sometimes, an infection in your vagina can spread up into your uterus and even the fallopian tubes and ovaries. It is called pelvic inflammatory disease. It can be serious. What are the other symptoms? Besides your vaginal discharge and pain, do you have a fever? I think so. How about nausea? Or malaise? Yes. I suppose I do. We need to start treating you immediately. First we will culture the discharge and draw some blood. Do you have to take my blood? Yes. I need to test the white blood cell count, which indicates infection, and the sedimentation rate, which indicates inflammation. While we are waiting for the test results, we do an ultrasound. What does an ultrasound have to do with infection? The ultrasound is to rule out an ectopic pregnancy or tumors. Assuming it is an infection, you will just give me antibiotics and it goes away. Right? Ideally. Yes. But there is a variety of bacteria that may be the cause. So initially, I will have you take both doxycycline and mefoxin. Then, when the results of the culture come back, we may change your antibiotic to one with a less broad spectrum. You said doxycycline and methoxin. Is that because they each cover a different spectrum? Exactly. The doxycycline is effective against chlamydias and many other bacteria. But mefoxin is more effective against gonorrhea. Ro. Did you say gonorrhea? Yes. Gonorrhea is one of the most common causes. Chlamydia trachomatis is also common. But there are many others. I just never thought I would have an STD. It's not that big of a deal. Jackie has treated me for STDs a few times. But PID is a big deal. There can be serious complications. Great. I don't understand how this happened. Well, for starters, excuse me. Hello. Oh dear. A grizzly bear. The mafia. A flamethrower. How? 
Electric eel. I will be right there. What is wrong? My husband has had an accident. I need to leave. But what should I do? I guess you could come with me. I will examine you in the ER. I guess I am okay with it. I am right behind you. Good luck, Deborah. Hello, Jackie. Your husband is still unconscious. Thank you, nurse. This is Deborah. I need to examine her. I may have PID or gonorrhea. Jackie, should she be sitting on the table with your husband? I don't see a problem. He is unconscious. But you don't want your husband to get. Never mind. So, Jackie, you were going to teach me about the complications of PID. Yes. But first, I want to emphasize that the most serious complications usually occur after repeated infections or if there is a long delay before treatment. I will definitely change some of my habits if it will help me avoid serious complications. Good. The best thing you can do is reduce the number of sex partners and use condoms. I remember reading that having an IUD contraceptive also increases your risk. What about sitting on a contaminated surface? I have never heard of anyone getting PID from sitting on a contaminated surface. Well, I seem to have made a habit of it. The only other causes I have heard of are giving birth, or during surgery, or abortion procedures. Oh, and douching is another risk factor. So, assuming I am a high risk, what complications can I expect? The complications depend on where exactly the infection is. If the infection is in your cervix or uterus, you may have dysmenorrhea. The infection may damage your uterine lining, which could make it difficult to get pregnant or carry a pregnancy to term. Or chronic pain. Pain during intercourse. Or during exercise. Thank you. Nurse. But the worst complications occur. When the infection gets beyond the uterus. And into the fallopian tubes. The inflammation closes off the lumen of the tube. About 1 in 10 women who get PID will suffer enough tubal damage from her first episode to become infertile. After three episodes, there is a 50% chance of infertility. If a fertilized egg is prevented from reaching the uterus, it becomes what we call an ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is a very serious medical emergency. And even a mild episode can damage the fallopian tube. If they're not treated promptly. Even your ovaries can get infected. Which is incredibly painful. And very likely to cause infertility. And sometimes. The infection can form an abscess. Or it may not respond to antibiotics. In these cases. Surgery may be necessary. Wow. I am lucky Agnes brought me here. I had never even heard of PID. And I never thought I would get a rare disease. Actually, PID is fairly common. About 1 in 10 women will have PID. And 1 in 4 women who has PID will suffer permanent damage to her reproductive system. What is that god awful noise? 
I think it is your husband. Let me check. Thank you. Nurse. We must remember not to use that machine anymore. Well, Deborah. I need to get back to my office. This nurse will take very good care of you. Hello, Deborah. Are you ready to knock out that PID?